Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor, and today I want to talk about a question from Jan. Jan is one of our newest patrons, and his question is How do you tell the difference between an INFJ and an ENFJ? He says he's taken multiple MBTI tests and he keeps getting on the border of INFJ and ENFJ. On my test, he scored on the border, on other tests, he scored INFJ. So, what do you do? How do you tell your difference between these two types? Now, in the MTI standpoint, these two types are very similar. The only difference is one is more driven by feeling and one is more driven by intuition. So that's how a lot of people tell the difference between the two types. But I tend to disagree with this. I tend to argue that ENFJs are a lot more intuitive than stereotypes online tend to portray. And INFJs are a lot more feeling than a lot of the stereotypes out there tend to say. So how do you really tell the difference? First, you gotta think about how they access intuition in a position of flow. So flow is when we're doing something we enjoy and something that comes natural and effortless to us. And INFJs tend to have strengths that ENFJs do not have. And ENFJs tend to have strengths that INFJs do not have. So what I've noticed is this pattern. Both tend to enjoy very similar activities, but both tend to avoid different things. Both have situations they tend to naturally draw themselves towards. And the other type tends to avoid it. The classic example is the ENFJ enjoys being where people and opportunities are. INFJs tend to prefer to detach themselves from situations and to work from a distance. So the INFJ is the distance leader, the ENFJ is the idealistic manager. Often what you will notice is INFJs have a comfort zone that is introverted in its nature and extrovert. ENFJs have a comfort zone that is extroverted in its nature. So when an ENFJ is looking for stability and peace of mind, they go to other people, they go to others. Okay, what do you guys think? What do you guys uh, feel about this? How, do you, uh, how does the group here resonate on these topics? The INFJ instead focuses on self. They need to process, they need to introspect, they need to think about it, they need to formulate their own opinion, their own idea. And now, don't get me wrong, ENFJs are, alongside ENTJs and INFJs, fiercely independent types. So, what you find is ENFJs, they care deeply about the people. And here's where the stereotypes get things wrong. ENFJs do place their independence above the people. ENFJs do care more about going their own way in life than about going along with the flow and with what everybody else expects from them. ENFJs have a dream, and that dream is very important. They are NF types. They are dreamer types. And uh, often what you'll find is these types are prepared to go their own way, even if it brings them isolation from the group or the scorn of others. That's why often ENFJs tend to go through a self-realization process in which they end up feeling like they are in a way tossed for, from or scorned by everyone else. ENFJs often have this uh, hero journey in a sense where they go from feeling like they have been rejected by the people and the people don't listen and the people don't hear them and uh, their ideas are dismissed as crazy, you know. Uh, and the ENFJs often feel, I have to show them my dream can work, I have to show them it can happen. People don't believe in me, that's the default of the ENFJ, people don't believe in me, I have to get them to believe in me by doing my own thing, working towards my independent project, by expressing myself in the areas I care about most, by going towards the opportunities people tell me don't exist. So ENFJs have this process and uh, you can tell it's extroverted because their consciousness is focused on the world around them. Their experiences, what have people told me, what pro opportunities have I sh seen, what connections have I made, what people do I know, what resources do I have. The executive, the manager types, the extroverted judging types, they look at what they have around them and then they look, how do I organize this? The introverted judging types, they look at, what do I have inside? What is my purpose? What is my identity? Who am I? And how do I organize this? How do I put this together? What is my identity? So, when you're an INFJ, 
You're said to have extroverted feeling, right? A lot of the people out there put out this cognitive function hierarchy and they say, yeah, dominant introverted intuition, auxiliary extroverted feeling, tertiary introverted thinking. That's how you know you're not INFJ. Okay, great. What I've found is uh, people don't know what auxiliary means. People have no idea what tertiary means. People have no idea what inferior means. And people don't know what dominant means. And this is what causes a lot of the confusion online. It doesn't mean you're always going to be using introverted intuition and sometimes extroverted feeling and sometimes the, uh, introverted thinking. That's not how you use this. That's not the brilliance of this model. What I've seen with personality hacker and with other great gifted people out there and organizations out there is this kind of car model or this kind of idea that the dominant is something we can use to a lesser or higher extent. The key thing about the dominant is the dominant is the driver. It's what moves you forward in life. The auxiliary is the inspiration. It's what encourages you to move forward and to chase your dreams and to do crazy things and to try out new things. So having auxiliary extroverted feeling is completely different from having dominant extroverted feeling. An ENFJ or a person with extroverted feeling is going to say it's natural and effortless to be where people are and to be out and to speak out for what you care about. Somebody like an INFJ is better described similarly as an introverted feeler. We are people that naturally tend to avoid speaking out about what we feel and to talk about our feelings to other people. We struggle with communicating what we want and what we don't want. So often what people say is, I can't read the INFJ, I don't know what they want, I don't know if they really want it, they never tell me. With the ENFJ, they're going to tell you. ENFJs have opinions, they are, they are moral people. They are gonna say, this is what I want, this is my dream, this is what's important to me. They're gonna let you know. The INFJ is different and it's much more complicated because of this need to process things internally. So the INFJ wants to and needs to and is inspired to speak out about what they care about and to say to people, yeah, this is important to me. Like INFJs want and need to do this to grow. But often what keeps us from doing the auxiliary function is our fear of vulnerability. Often what you see is people go into these auxiliary loops where they jump into it and they force themselves to do it and they put themselves out there and then they feel naked and then they feel, oh, people are watching me, people are judging me, people are looking down on me, people are thinking I'm stupid for saying these things. And the same goes for the ENFJ's introverted intuition. The ENFJ looks at and thinks about this philosophical reality. They have philosophical theories, they have ideas, they have thoughts, they have original ideas. Uh, but often, first they are afraid of taking time to themselves and processing these things and letting these ideas blossom. And for, secondly, they're afraid of sharing and putting these ideas out there because what if people think these ideas are stupid? So often what you see with extroverted intuition is extroverted intuition will throw ideas out there. You know, often extroverted intuitives are associated with having rich or new ideas. And often what I find is extroverted intuitives are afraid of processing and actually thinking about and being serious about these ideas. I feel often they will say they care or they are interested in something and they will put something out there, but they don't really dare to invest themselves or commit fully to a theory or a hypothetical possibility. So often it's that they have ideas and they speak about ideas, but they are afraid of truly going down the rabbit hole, to say it like that. And here it's that you want to, and you can feel encouraged to and inspired to, and you admire the people that do, but you tend to look at it and go, what if it's stupid? What if it turns out to be wrong? What if I, but I don't know, I don't know. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a wild goose chase, you know? So the extroverted intuitive is much more focused on, you know, the ideas they can clearly see, the opportunities they know and understand around them are present and could be envisioned or enacted shortly. And, or they put something out there, but they never commit to it. They never really make the jump. So they, they say, yeah, we could all like do this. And then they don't do it. Or they 
look at something very easy and they say, okay, everyone, let's do this and then that. And then it's so easy, so I'll do that as well and then I'll do that. And that's often what we can see with extroverted intuition. Often with introverted intuitives such as myself, the relationship is different. It's a fear of uh, uh, going out and testing an idea. And, you know, extroverted intuitives, they're usually pretty good at actually researching ideas, you know, gathering ideas, looking, okay, maybe that idea, maybe that idea, what ideas could I do, what opportunities are available, what things are possible. And they're often quite ready to move for it quite quickly. But the introverted intuitive wants to, to let things simmer. So what you see with the INFJ is just this tendency to think about something for a really long time without doing anything. After what people say about INFJs is they're always thinking about it and it looks like they're very serious about it, but nothing ever happens. So the question becomes, do they really want it? How much do they really want it if they prefer to keep it theoretical, if they never let themselves actually try things out? So what I always say is you have to go and search for inspiration. You have to put yourself out there. You have to do the things that make you vulnerable, no matter if you're an ENFJ or an INFJ. And if you're a very vulnerable INFJ, if you're putting yourself out there, you are going to appear a little more like an ENFJ. And if you are an ENFJ that is prepared to sit down by the drawing desk and to draw things out and to build up an idea in your head without sharing it with anybody, just keeping it to yourself, just letting your idea form on your own the way you want it to form, then you're an ENFJ. If you're able to do these things, but if you recognize that these things are difficult for you, that's a good clue. And what I always tell people is uh, don't trust the test, trust yourself introspect, listen to yourself, form a strong opinion. Nobody knows you better than you do. What I mean with this is there might be experts out there. They might have some clues. They might have some ideas. They might be able to help you, but they can only help you by giving you the resources, the theories, the insight, the systems, the knowledge that you can use to then understand yourself. They can never tell you 100% this is your personality type. What you have to do is you have to tell yourself this. You have to look through the data, you have to look at the studies, you have to look at the theories, and you have to make sense of it yourself. And often we are way better at reading ourselves than we think. We know ourselves quite well. We have, you know, after all, we, we have spent de decades with ourselves, just thinking, just following ourselves through life, you know. All those stupid parties we went to, all those stupid mistakes we did, all those great times we had. So if you can look at yourself from a positive basis of what do I love, what do I enjoy, who am I at my best, then you'll feel a strong gut draw or pull to a certain personality type. And uh, you might be completely right, you might be one letter off, you might be slightly off. Usually it's not that you misunderstood yourself, what you've seen is correct but perhaps you misunderstood the theory. The only mistake we can make is we can, we might mistake the theory. But usually, can we be honest with ourselves? Can we come from a position of honesty and say, yeah, this is what I care about, this is what I want. And to, while we do, feel relaxed, feel happy, feel truly that, yeah, this is right. Then we really do know ourselves. So I hope this video helped make it more clear to you, whether you're an INFJ or an ENFJ. The difference is in how we show vulnerability. The difference is in what we do to make ourselves vulnerable. The difference is what we do when we are inspired rather than when we are in flow. So the difference in short is uh, what do we do when we start feeling unusually brave or when we take risks or when we jump into things or try new things? What do we do? What does it mean for you to be vulnerable or to try something new? That's the clue. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, leave a like, share and subscribe. And of course, if you want to submit a question, uh, visit patreon.com slash ericdor and yeah, leave your question um, there. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.